Marcelo. Sí. Perdimos al moderador, ¿no? Organized by Aquacultors Conafao. Aquacultores de AOME y el Consejo Nacional. Aquacultores de AOME y el National Council of Conafao. An animal nutrition committed with the agriculture sector and attending the call of the authorities. It began a new scheme with the fact of let our colleagues and co workers some bring some tools that push in the enforcement and the enhancement of the sector. We thank your responses as facilitators so Conagua was able to take effect in this year. Receive on behalf of the in the committee, welcome to Conagua 20. 2020. To begin the program, let me, you, let me introduce you to the participation panel. Along those four days, we will have a series of talks where you will be able to participate with your questions and remarks. You can send them through the chat. Once that the that talk ends, we will select the participations that are more relevant and they will send through email with the proper answer. We will begin with the sanitation panel where we will have the opportunity to know that the current situation in Northwest of Mexico. We are thankful for, for the participation for those different committees of aquatic center. And now I'll let it give the word to the engineer Julio Cabanillas Ramos. Good morning, good morning you all. I am thankful for this invitation to be part of this very interesting panel and take it into consideration that the most important is the participation of the speaker. We begin giving the word to Master in Science, Nelson Quintero, so he can begin with his talk. Thank you so much. Go ahead, Nelson. I don't know if you heard me. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, you all. Thank you for the invitation. Now we are going to present on this Congress, in this remote via Congress, the sanitary status and the production in the Sinaloa state. Well, inside the presentation comes this message that it was very interesting to me. You can read it afterwards. To go into the matter, well, I have to present the sanitary status and the productive estate on Cesacin in 2020. They are very interesting data that, well, we are going to begin with our mission. As any company, we have a mission that basically is focused into the producers may have productive sanity through the prevention, control, and eradication of the several different pathogens that imp negatively impact the productions year with year. This, of course, is achieved with the technical assistance that we are providing to the producers. And obviously, with the resources that year to year are spreading through the different work plans in contribution with the government institutions who are the main givers 
on G NGOs, producers, and the academy, the research that has played a very important paper in the last years. Well, the committee, the sanitary committee or population of Tario population is the sanitation. It's about 1,015 production units distributed on stream with 800 80 units in this cycle was used uh, only 850. On tilapia is around 100, a little bit more. However, this year only 74 operate. And in different seashells, in, in the crisis last year, we have 24 units of production in this year, 35. As per uh, inequity, inequity, where we check the good practices and where they get the product uh, certification of producers. In the units and production units, we have 165 farms, nine processing pri primary processing plants, and 263 cooperatives that they are part of the fishing sector, and they are increasing, and the support is is the support of the government is directed into that sector mainly. For the 2020 cycle, we have three cycles, four in the same intensive part, but uh, along four units of production, four cycles, and three cycles of the system, hyper intensive cycle. This is the uh, abstract, the resume of the productive cycle, where they were seed 850 units of production that covers an area of 51,217 hectares, where they were seed 500, 500, 440, 61 PLs. Also, where we seed. 5,950,000 TLs with a density of 11 stream per square meter. That was the density on the first cycle. As per the sanitation status of those 850 units, 284 percent is some kind of problem in uh, in an area of 25,000 hectares some hectares with an area real affected of 17,000 and some hectares. As per production data, we have uh, that they been harvest around 604 production units with an area of 33,100 and some hectares. And at the round, we have a 64.7 of the harvest area. Now, within our records, of course, we need to reinforce this part. We have uh, that totally we have uh, about 3,000, 8,000 tons and a production, a part of production on 7,000 and some tons with a weight of 15 grams and an oversell of 51%, very similar to last year and a yield of 907 kilograms per hectare with a factor of 1.45. On the second cycle, there were seed only 599 production units with an area of 31,490 and some hectares, where there were seed 3,000 and some PL. There were no seed. And in this case, the density was of 100 organisms per square meter. On the sanitation status, we have those, those sectors. Sorry, those units, those production, only 92 percent of some kind of sanitation problem with a surface of 7,500 and some hectares. And with a, a real surface affected of 7,400 and some hectares. And production data, they were harvest 130 units of production with an area of 4,400 4, and some hectares. They were a harvest, or has been record, the harvest of 50%. 
We have production on the second cycle of 4,400 tons of tons and a partial production of 1,500 tons. The average weight of the second cycle is 14.5 grams with a survival of 60%, a little bit higher than on the first cycle and a yield and kilo per hectare of 925 kilograms per hectare with a factor of 1.15. On the third cycle, we only seed eight local places that with 68 unit production units with an area of 1,253 hectares. There were seed 88,000 and some uh, PL at a density of seven swim per square meter. On this third cycle, well, there is no records of sanitation problems. As per production data, we have five units harvested in an area of 32 hectares. More or less, very close to the 3% of the production of the harvest sector. We have a production of 14 tons and a partial production of 3.7 tons. The way is 13.2, survival is 51%. The yield is 443 kilos per hectare with a conversion factor of 0.82. However, as you can see, we need to do a lot of work to collect the rest of the information. As per the hyperintensive systems, there were three cycles but we are going to present just one because these basically have no data. They were see the seven production units with the volume of 37,928 square meters. They were see 18 million of PL and with a density of 490 organisms per square meters and sanitation data of those seven, one have sanitation problems in a volume of 240 square meters, like uh, was the affected volume, the real affected volume. As per the production, we had that it was harvested two production units with a volume of 9,000 and some uh, as, as cubic squares, 26% uh, has been harvested so far, a, pro, a total production of 46 tons and a partial of nine. The average weight is nine grams with a survival of 85% and a yield of 4.8 kilograms per meter and a conversion factor of 1.29. This is a general view of how we are at the time. Of the 850 production unit, productive units, the area that has been seen is 83,995 hectares. And the PL seed is 8,800 million of PLs, which we have uh, uh, average production of 45 tons. That's what we have at the time. However, the harvest area is about the 47%. So we still something very interesting left to go. And we believe that the production won't be, won't reach the numbers of last year. Nonetheless, we are going to be very close the 70 tons in 2020. As per pathogen reports per unit, uh, here we have for the diagnosis of white spot into 2020, where it was performed 1,397 diagnosis, only nine has been positive for white spot. We are a little bit uh, below the last year. Last year we had uh, about 19 positive cases on Taura. This effort has been diminished due to the Taura. We have several years that we don't have a positive case. We're only doing the diagnosis. 
where the clinical signs they may affect the shrimp. So those those samples we haven't have a positive case on HPND. We have done 1538 diagnoses, 130 came positive. We are a little bit uh, below as per the last year numbers and in NHP of the mil 1398, we only detected 96, a little bit below of the last cycle, 2019, and HHA in AB is 2300 diagnosis. Here the prevalence basically is about the same, about the 30%. This year has been detected 473 positive cases for HHA in AB. This very interesting data here because it seems like the sanitation problems have been decreasing. However, the mortality or the survival on the production units, they are not being reflected on this table. What, so they are other agents or factors that they are impacting in a, ne in a negative way the different cultures here at Sinaloa. This is another very interesting data. On the average of NASH, when we see those uh, different peaks of in the, in the cultures, the age last year was on days when it came to the peaks. Nowadays, the average uh, of the cultures is around the 50%, and with a mortality rate of about or close to 10%. That shows us that. Uh, well, the organisms or shrimp have in a certain way a better resilience and the mortality rates, well, they are not as drastic as when it came up the HPND. Well, here is, is a commercial for Rosasacin. Since 2017, with the contribution on the Master in Science, Julio Cabanillas, which started with this project, who began the first, the first advancements to achieve and have a program, a very explosive was as a sin. As a matter of fact, no other committee has it. And it is that uh, we go into the provider labs of uh, PLs uh, to do uh, some checking, but at the end, some reviews, but at the end, for, but at the end for security of the producer and the lab, we are on the dynamic that for us to be able to evaluate the general condition of the PL, it's necessary that the producer at, 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 at his request, ask us to assassin through a paper, a, a memo, that we go and evaluate the PL. This is very important and very interesting because with this, we can see on the sanitation condition that the animals are going to be set at the end, that is going to be the reflection of our production at the end of the uh, as they are not that period, as better PL, we can have better results. However, now we have three years with this program and been systematic, and we have uh, a request of about 10% on relation to the units that they see PLs. If they are 850 production units, Sometimes they have two or three cycles, and very for sure they are going to be accumulative units of 1300, 1400 farms. Just in this year, we received 134 requests. The biggest one it was in February, and in August, the next one, of which only were performed 128 requests. Some other were canceled and they were they are not taken again. Unfortunately, 
this program has not been as used by the producers. And it's worth mentioning that it's a program that has, uh, it's a free program. It's a free program that they may use most of those producers. So in that way, they know which is the condition of the PL that they are putting into their tanks, into their ponds. The ponds that were taken care of were 457, of which to each one of the evaluation is given a rate. This is, uh, they are different kind of analysis. Analysis in fresh, bacteriological, uh, Notatory activity, well, a series of uh, diagnoses where it's included even analysis of PCR. Here, the interesting is that, well, basically we got the total, the, the labs that were evaluated at the end, they have a grade of 8.3, which is a very acceptable result. But in September, we have, uh, that is a little bit uh, below eight, which is the minimal acceptable. So we invite you strongly once again to come close to us and request that evaluation. Now, from the month of January, February to 2021. As per the results on PCR, just on DHTMB, we have positive effects. Of the 70 that been performed, uh, some of them have been positive only then. But basically, that's it. The information that I wanted to share with you. I guess they had a lot of questions, but from the times, we will see each other uh, do a little abstract. And here we share the information. And if you have any question, it will be a pleasure to resolve it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nelson. And at the time it was mentioned, we are um, taking attention to the questions that the uh, people that is working and joining us in this event may have to do that exchange with each one of you about the sanitation topics and the perspective that may arise from there. And if there is no any inconvenience, likewise, we continue with the mechanic of uh, leave the questions and remarks at the end. And we give now we will pass the word who ask it to continue. And the bachelor aquaculture biologist, Losas, coordinate, technical coordinator of the aquaculture in Nayarit. Well, the screen is yours. Damian, and uh, it's your time now. Thank you, nice to say hello. Good morning. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna tilt a little bit the screen. I'm gonna share. Well, you hear me? I'm going to begin about what is the sanitation status in Nayarit and what we have up to now and the production result of the cycle 2020. I begin by sharing what we have on the states in regards to the stream cultures. This is done in six municipalities by the coast on the state in 11,500 hectares. They are 60, 50 units of aquaculture production, and they make more than 2,600 jobs. And we have a um, monetary um, of 240 million pesos. It's, it's, and these are the local the local units and the municipalities that they are in those, in those units, the number of farms and surface per municipality. And in this side, what is the number of farms per local units? 
and the number of hectares. Well, what is the sanita sanitation status? I'm going to share for what we have here, what we consider, uh, because there were no affectments through the analysis of PCR that were done for NHP. That was that uh, we are focusing on a work plan. So I took those affectations that were presented based on the different yields, the mortalities, and the different affectations. Sorry, Damian, a motion here. Your presentation is not going through. I don't know if there is an inconvenient there and show it. I don't know if it's been pres if you're having some issue. Well, here with our, uh, the experts on the transmission, it will be important to put it from the beginning, but because the data was not being shown, and two with the system work, I don't know if they can help us. So it was because it's not just my case. It might be prudent that you uh, remove it and load it again, Damien. Bueno, si gustan, eh, vamos a, a hacer un espacio para posteriormente continuar con la presentación de, de Damián Sanay. Y si no tiene inconveniente, eh, nuestro otro panelista, pues el, el médico veterinario Baltasar Chávez, un, un saludo, Baltasar. Este, no sé si, si pudieras tú apoyarnos en darle continuidad con tu ponencia al evento. Claro que sí, señor. Les voy a compartir la pantalla. Now the MBC, the veterinary medic is going to continue with the next speaker of the sanitation status and the situation of advancement that prevail in Sonora. Thank you, Baltasar. Now you may speak. Good morning, you all. On behalf of aquaculture sanitation of the Sonora State, we are thankful for the invitation for this Congress on Aquaculture Conagua 2020. Each year has been getting stronger, having a better quality, and we have the best success for this Congress. And also, we thank the participation of everyone that is listening and are viewing us now. We are going to present the sanitation status of the Sonora State and advancement to October of this year. 
And to begin well, my name is Baltasar Chavez Gometas. I'm the manager of the sanitation, uh, of Oculto Sanitation and the base of the result of this cycle 2020 are uh, a very particular year, a year that we did not expect, that we were not expecting what happened, that happened this pandemic. However, the producers, they continue pushing the activity and uh, we present the result of this effort that has been done by the aquaculture stream in Sonora. Nowadays for this 2020, they worked on a first cycle, 139 production units uh, with uh, 15,000 and some hectares and a second cycle. They have 10 units production with some 10,000 and some hectares. This year operated six production units less than in 2019 and 186 hectares less than 2018. Here on the graphic, we can see them at the south south side on, I don't know if you can see it, but it's this south part of Sonora State where there is the most percentage of production area. Sorry, just to locate yourself. The 139 production units that were seen this year, they are located in what we call the local points of sanita aquicole sanitations. They are uh, uh, 14 and they grab the water, they share them through uh, water infrastructure in common. Uh, so there's a certain of, uh, they a certain amount of local associations that they work together here. As per the maternities in this year, there were still 30 maternities for less than 2019. The number of runs or, or lots that they were seed on those maternities in 2020 were 51 compared with 62 in 2019. The PL that were seen in 2019 was 7,000 and some millions, and 2020 is 6 million and some. So it was less. Maternities 63% and 56% on this 2020. So at the end, we had 11% less of. Uh, the same of the numbers of last year. And we can see here basically on the graphic that little de detriment. As per the different tanks, the seeding on the tanks, we had 139 production units seeded. And in a second cycle, uh, 10, 10 production units seed, seeded. As per surface, we have on the first cycle 26,300 and some, and in the second, 1,400 with a total of 28 hectares and the density. In the first cycle, 18.1 organisms per square meter, and the second one, 15.8 organisms per square meter. We have an average of 17.9 organisms in the year 2019 and in the first cycle 4387 million and in the OPL and in the second cycle a total of 393 million for a total of 5500 5, and some millions of PL and we have the record of the register per area in the north area. The, in Sonora, we are dividing in four parts the state to be able to identify it easily. We have in the north part 32 production units with a surface of 16,500 some hectares with an average of 18 stream per square meter and a total of 
2,900 million PL. This is 47% of the local on the Sonora state, more or less in the center. That comes from Guaymas, Cruz de Tierra Lobos. And we have 23 production units with a surface of 1,900 hectares and a yield of 20.5 with a total seed of 400, mil, 400 million shrimps. As per the South A, they are 68 production units and compared with this 20 with a surface of 784 hectares, average of 17.8 per square meter organisms and uh, 1,300 million PL seeded. In the other area, 16 units production with an average of 17.3 organisms per square meter and a total of 505 million PL seeded. In total, we have the 139 production units with a surface of 28,800 hectares, 19.9 organs per square meters, and 5,100 millions of PL seeded. That's it, it's a reduction on the surface compared with 2019 of 1% on the first cycle and 45% on the second cycle. Last year, on the second cycle, they were seeded 4,400 hectares compared with uh, 2,409 hectares that were seeded before. This is a graphic that shows the surface that is being seeded only in the first culture. And we have a total number of the uh, surface that has been used and by different areas. This comes from the previously mentioned data. As per the data of seeding, the data that we have here is based on the program presented for the, con for the certificate of good practices. Within uh, the Sonora State, we have a Sanitary protocol is published in the official paper of the state. And there is established that to be able to, to request the permit of each unit, production unit, the committee should issue a certificate of good practices that does that precisely that each production unit fulfill with some of sanitary practices established in that protocol. With, uh, without, without this document, the production unit cannot get his permit. So the data that is presented here are based on that information. And then it's issued a certificate of good practices. We have these uh, records on the data of the seed and the 2000, and we can see how in 2014 on the first seed in April and afterwards on the last three years has stabilized itself and uh, the different um, seeding begin in that areas. We can see here the last unit of production from the first place. So uh, for 2020, the last one that do, that seeded this is, was in August 31 in average. We have in the north side that they happen in May 14. That means that in the area, it was laid at 50% of the units. They, they were laid about three days compared with 2019. In the center of the state, we have uh, established at the beginning of the seed for 
about uh, March 18 has not changed a lot this date on the center. And the last farm on the first cycle was uh, August 31. So in average, we have the date of April 25 compared with the April in the 2018 in average, 43% of the production units, they were laid for about 26 days compared with the last year. In the south side, we have the date of March, March 13, 2020. And uh, in the previous year, we well, are from 2014, they were also on March. And likewise in the center and uh, the last graphic that was used as first cycle was on August 31. And on average, the 29th of April was the beginning of the different seeds in 2020. So 48% of the production units in the south side, they were late for about 23 days compared with May of the last year. Here we have the graphic that explains that information. As per the historic behavior of the density on the cities, we can see that in 2004, 2005, the densities are above the 25, 28 stream per square meter that decreased also in part to the impact of white spot that were part of 2005. And then the impact in 2010, 11, 12, the density diminished that in 2013, 2014, there were 13.5 stream per meters thinking about the West Pout, but in this 2012, 13, it was not expected the uh, impact by the Pibrium Parelum Moliticum. In 2014, we have more or less the same density. And uh, since it was uh, an increment on the production after 2013, that's where we, we were increasing little by little the density, so in the last, uh, three years have been very close to to the normal yields and normal densities per square meter. And this data, well, this is for the Sonora State. We can see the origin of the postlate are, are different on the state. The five labs that they are in the Sonora State from the 2012 were increasing and uh, 2014, we have an average of 82% produced from the same laboratories in Sonora, and that uh, remained the same until 2016. And from 2017, decreased until have a 67% in this 2020. As per uh, sanitation problems that they were important on what was said this year, we don't have reports of sanitation problems. If there were, maybe they did not report it. It should have been done so, but we have knowledge that there were problems, and the, uh, failures on equipment, some failures on the handling, but nothing in the impact and the sanitation impact on the materials. As per the different pounds, we have um, a few cases reported, and the first one was reported April 28. The impacts were bearable. They were not very severe with of sanitation point of view. As per the main pathogens, we have the white spot basically was not presented. As, however, we will, we have some cases with similar signs to the white spot 
but at the time of do the PCR test, they came negative. So this year, uh, it's been pretty easy on the white spot. In Vibrium Paramolyticum, as per the surveillance program uh, executed by the Sanitation Committee, coordinated with the Direction of Epidemiology of Senasica, we had this year uh, 50 and some percent of prevalence. In HP, we have prevalent low prevalence, 6%. And the EHHNB are 36% of prevalence. There were other pathogens, but at the time of doing the analysis, uh, well, we saw that it was not, not really very important, some very low impact in the production and the production units. And well, this phrase, it might sound a cliche, but we have seen it on the processes, on the free trade agreements, where this part of the sanitation, the inequity has been an important factor on the negotiations. So through in Sonora, the, from diagnosis on laboratories towards the Mexican organization of accreditation under the proper regulation approved by the Senasica. And since a few years ago, Mexico has been free of yellow hair, infectious, infectious necrosis. And as I mentioned, mentioned Nelson uh, a while ago, the presence of Taura basically do not exist since several years ago. If this disease were on the uh, sanitation program, well, Mexico will be declared also free of Taura. And well, as far as we know, Senasic is working on this topic to put uh, to put Mexico free of that pathogen. As I mentioned before, the prevalence of white spot basically was none in 2019, neither. Very low prevalence. We want to clarify also that on this 2019, with the change of the administration on the federal government, there were uncertainty about the resources that they will be available, and there was a delay on their arrival. So on the critical stages of the cycle of the shrimp and the early stages in pre brood they diminish, they decrease the, the analysis, the checking on the West Pot as well as other diseases. But there is a important significance of the diminution of the West Pot. The same thing happened with the presence of every paramolyticus, HSPD, that we also see a prevalence, a very low prevalence. We can see that since 2017, the prevalence decreases rapidly in such a way that in only seven years has been achieved a recovery very important of this disease. The prevalence of HHNB, we can see here, the data is, comes uh, similar to the Sinaloa state. They report at 38% prevalence, and we are reporting 36, very similar. And uh, the prevalence of NHP, well, it's been very low since 2004, five. 2009 has been decreasing. So this year has been presented only 6% of that prevalence. So as per what I mentioned before, of, on, on the activity of the producer and those first we can see that is so, and this is what really have to be taken care of. And to take care of this, we need the participation 
of the sanitation authorities, from the producers, from the different committees and the technicians that work on the farms to be able to have those results or improve them. We have affectation indicators, the preliminary results as of now, based on the data of the different seeds, and likewise on the sanitary protocol by the Sonora State established that to be able to issue for the government, the Sonora emit, issues a permit to harvest, it has to have a certificate of good practices to avoid that, that uh, harvest become a risk. And well, uh, to those certifications are necessary for the harvest. And it's the same for the area, area north, north, south, center, south A, south B. The affectations, they were apparently the percentage are high, but the impact in reality were very mild. As for example, in general speaking, from the surface per hectare, we have a 66% of affectation, and the number of farm it was 64%. As for the detection of uh, high impact pathogens. Before we were reporting white spot and bearing paramedical. However, white spot, as I mentioned, has been absent this year. And we report and we were about paramolyticum that in general in the South B, it was the highest one. And at the end, we have a 5% prevalence of that pathogen. As per HHA and BNHP, Etc. We can see that yes, the part in the area South B, it was an impact bigger than 50%, but the North, which had the, the biggest one and 75% as per the production results, those are advancements that we have up to October 31. We see that the percent survival of surveillance percentage is 62%, 55 in the center, 61 in a 61 South A, 67 South B. And average a state is 62%. As per yield per ton per hectare, we have in the north side, the bigger yield, 2.84 tons per hectare, center 2.66, South A, 2.6 and South B, 2.78 in average, 2.58 tons per hectare in the state. And uh, harvested surface, we have 97% uh, of advance so far. And we have a comparison on affectations with uh, percentage with the total production of since 2013, when the vibrium medical hit, uh, and then there were 14,000 tons. And from then on, the production recovery and 58,000 in 2015, we have a decrease to 51. Uh, when the disease hit harder, and from 2017, 2018, 2019, we had 67 tons. This year, the base that we have is 68,200 tons, and, and we have a forecast of closing on uh, November 30, uh, that we are going to close this production cycle. As per the proto sanitary protocol, it should be in at November 30. We expect 72,000 and some tons per hectare. That's the forecast that we have. Well, and here is the graphic the evolution from 2004, 2020. And this graphic show the history on here and Sonora. 
As per um, production for Sona, we have, uh, in a not soon, what they produce, 68% of the state production. This year, they have a very mass of 159 tons in the center, 4,400, and in the south side, uh, and the south A, south B, um, well, and that gives a total of 58 at the October 31. The average size in the state is 21.8 grams. The farms has total harvest 130. Uh, at this point, we have a surface with total report harvest of uh, 139 and we need more than three hectares. So we are putting the production is 72 tons at the end of the cycle. And well, any recommend, like some recommendations that we do for the next cycle and for these months and for the last months that they come into 2020 is uh, we want to recommend that before uh, solving a problem with a chemical product or a veterinary product first, do privilege the handling. Uh, what Mr. Nelson say a while ago, that there were no diseases of high impact that affected the survival a little bit bigger than 50%. Well, in the case of us, we detected that yes, there has been, uh, especially in the common structure, there's been some things there and that they have affected the cycle in some times. We believe and we want to solve those failures in the handling. Um, we adhere to the investigation. Investig Yes, just do this recommendation. Let's return to the basics. And obviously, the handling that is done in Sonora and the farms, they need to improve to have less problem and improve the survival. And last recommendation, the farms use protocol, strict protocols for the pandemic. We invite you that you also continue applying to have less problem of sanitation problems and contagious on the personnel. And well, if the things go well, what we want for the next year is have a conaqua in, in presence as far as we have the direct contact on those conferences. And well, the voice is gone. We thank you, we thank you your participation and Baltasar and we are in condition with the projection. We would like to continue with the presentation of Damian of Damian, are you there? 
sí, ya. Damián, that's when it's yours. And we would like, before half for the inconvenient, somehow you are going to be, to do it as fast as you can, to give Marian to a few minutes of question and answer, that they have several requests. Without more, if we can afford to do, please go ahead. Good morning to you all. I'm going to share what is the sanitary status and the production that we have on the state. Up to now. Next. Do you hear me, Julio? That is a projection, yes. Thank you, Damian. I'm going to share with you the sanitary state and the production cycle of 2020. As I was saying a while ago, where is the different cultures in Nayarit? Uh, it's on six municipalities on the state, 11,000 hectares. They are about 650 farms. This generates 2,600 jobs directly. In 2019, there was uh, monies to be expanded to 2,900 million pesos. And here is the number of farmers and surface per municipality. Being the municipality of Rosa Morada, the one that has more production units. Likewise, in that, in that graphic, the number of units and surface by local, uh, by local teams. Here I'm gonna go a little bit faster. And the cycle first of the first year, taking the affectation that were taken as minor results of four kilos per hectare, 500 kilos per hectare. The affectations were based on mortalities higher than 70%. And those who were reported a sanitary report by the personnel on the field that visit the unit. Here, from the total of farms by each one of the, uh, by each farms, the total number of farms in blue, 77 farms. And from those, they were reported that had this kind of affectation, 30 units, uh, 936 hectares. And as such, I'm gonna leave the information here. I just go to the totals. The total farms that they were seen on the first cycle taking this, uh, this parameter of yields, there were 373 farms in total. Of those 42 were taken as affected on what is this kind of yield less than 500 kilograms per hectare. On what is the affectation taken in consideration the mortality higher than 70%, the same units 373 and of those affected 29, 29 units that reported mortality higher than 70%. Other of the parameters that were taken into consideration is that uh, I do not took more into consideration what is the, the result of the diagnostics for PCR, but there was the diagnosis that were done for all the cases was the NHP officially, and in none of the cases it came back positive. So we take those parameters and the last graphic on the affected, affectation of the sanitary report on the same units that were seen, there were only reports of affectation of seven units. This is for the first cycle. This following slide is the second cycle that this is, uh, they are several units of this cycle. We consider the cycle Cycles a year. I want to 
tell you a little bit how it is, so the affectations, take it the same parameters of the cycle one, of the total of harms that we received, they have a minus affectation, minor, minus than 500 tons per hectare, we have uh, the data of the 465, see 12 units that report this kind of yields, they are few. As I say, because they're still working, they have not closed their cycles. And in the case of the affectations on mortality above 70% of 435, up to now only six. And uh, 17 report of farms affected of the 435 in this cycle, cycle two. Well, here, I continue with what is the data of the cycle one, the first uh, sitting of the year here, and the first one of the state is done from January, February, March, the first three months. The total of farms is 376 on this cycle, on the first seed. Um, sorry, 338. The density is 19 organs per square meter. That's the mortality percentage, 47%. The size, uh, 12 grams. The surface is 6,200. The production of this is 5,000 tons. This is close up. Those are farms that seed and harvest already. And from those, there's only 13% to be harvest of this surface. Of the second, of, of the second period, 107 farms, 156 million of the 16%, 6, sorry, 16.5 organisms per square meter. The mortality that we have on record is 46%. And 28, uh, the surface is still to be harvest of the 953 hectares that were seed. The yield so far is 1,031 kilograms per hectare. Continuing with the cycle two, the first seeding that has been done here, we are uh, considering the cycle two from July till December, the, on the first one we consider as the period one, and the next one period two, the second part of the year. On this first uh, season, uh, a lot of the farms do it until after the rains, which is in September and August, that's where they seed, and they follow the cycle of, of the next year. So from this, from this first seed of the second cycle, 527 million PL seed, average of 50% mortality, density 14 organs per square meter. Of those 98%, most of the surface is still to be harvested. The production that we have is uh, 102 tons. The second city, not the second cycle, 160 farms, 200 million, 37% of mortality average. Uh, the density, 15 organisms per square meter. We still 82% to harvest of those seeded of the 1,800 hectares so far. There's a third cycle in some farm, as you can see on the graphic, on the area of San Blas, uh, 72 farms, 90 million PLs, 31% mortality, 88% of those 520 hectares had not been harvested. With this graphic, the, product, the annual production, the preliminary annual production by local council, they are uh, uh, still to bring that data of the harvest of the total that been seen in the year, 14,000 hectares, 
a community vectors and what we have as harvest production this year 6400 hectares with 1062 kilograms per hectare and we expect to end the uh, harvest of this with around 12,000 tons that's the projection on the production of 2020 and lastly, uh, to summarize what I mentioned, 14,000 hectares, they've been harvested 6,600 hectares and are still active 7,500 direct registry of 7 million or so PL seed and this production of 8,758 that differentiates from the previous one there were 600, 6, and some that we consider the annual production January to December. We we'll continue with the records per second but we close the year with the production in December. This is what that we have up to now on November 25. 8,700 and some tons harvested and they are still undergoing uh, a few thousand that they still need to be harvested. Damien? Yes, I was just for due to time asking your conclusion, but sorry to all the persons, all the people that are listening, uh, watching the different conferences, very important. We apologize for, for the times. The, the times there will be time for the panel of questions and answers, Q&A, but as, uh, as is usual, when those things happen, we are going to ask that they have been consulting and questions to please through the administrators bring your contact data to send you the answers. And uh, likewise, for those, because of the time and the information, we're not able to document, fully document what was of your interest. Well, we will find a test to, to make you uh, get the information. Right now, I thank all of you my respects, my regards, and we are going to be leaving here the conducers for this stay because there's another panel here of conferences. Thank you, thank you to you all. And I leave the award to the administrators of the event.